One of the largest artificial sweetness studies has just been released, and it helps to answer some really important questions. Because previous studies have raised concerns about the potential risks of artificial sweeteners, the World Health Organization even issued a conditional recommendation against them for weight control or to reduce the risk of developing diabetes. But I see patients at the clinic all of the time who are struggling to kick the habit of drinking sugary drinks, so they often ask me whether they should switch to a zero-sugar option with artificial sweeteners instead, and it's been a tricky question to answer. Now though, with this new study that directly compared sugary drinks to artificially sweetened drinks, I can give my patients a clear answer. Plus, the study uncovered some really interesting effects on the gut microbiome from artificial sweeteners, which shed some light on the risk conversation. So why might we consider artificially sweetened drinks in the first place? Well, the logic seems straightforward, because consuming low or no calorie drinks instead of their sugary counterparts should mean a substantial cut in calorie consumption, and that should help us lose or at least manage our weight. But some observational studies paint a really surprising picture, where people who consume more artificial sweetened drinks tend to have a higher body weight. So one study, for example, found that artificial sweetener intake was generally associated with a higher BMI, body weight, and waist circumference. And it was also linked to a stronger increase in those metrics over a 25-year period. And in their discussion, the authors reviewed several other observational studies, and they revealed the same basic pattern. So on the strength of those findings and the existing research, they cautioned against the strategy of replacing natural sugars with artificial ones. So what explains these findings? Well, several ideas have been proposed. So some think that these substances can disrupt the gut microbiome, and what goes on in our digestive tract has profound implications for our metabolic processes. It can, for instance, negatively impact glucose metabolism, and a related theory is that certain artificial sweeteners can act to alter insulin signaling. And another proposal is that eating or drinking artificially sweetened foods triggers a psychological mechanism where we feel like we've avoided calories, so we end up indulging and eating more than we otherwise would. Or it may just be those that are struggling with weight are more likely to reach for artificial sweetened products. And there's another issue to note in these observational data studies. So not only has consuming artificial sweeteners not been linked to weight loss, but the research has also surfaced some troubling associations with several other health conditions. And these include things like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. One large cohort analysis, for example, found a potential direct association between higher artificial sweetener consumption and increased cardiovascular risk. But observational studies alone, they don't give us a very clear picture. Instead, we want to have a look at randomized controlled trials to try and disentangle exactly what's going on. And the study that just came out uncovered some really important new data. The aim of the study was to investigate the effects of artificial sweeteners of both food and drinks. So researchers wanted to see the impact on weight, cardiometabolic risk factors, and the gut microbiome in obese individuals. The study looked at both children and adults, but we're going to focus on adults though, because the number of children enrolled was relatively small and the compliance was a challenge. So in the study, 341 adults followed a two-month calorie-restricted diet targeting about 5% of weight loss. This was then followed up by a 10-month healthy diet without that calorie restriction. Participants were, however, instructed to limit their sugars to less than 10% of energy intake, and during the 10 months, one group replaced sugar-rich products with artificially sweetened ones. So this could include a range of options like aspartame, erythritol, and xylitol. The other group ate sugar as normal, and the main things that they were looking at were changes in weight and microbiome at the end of the year. And a key question here was whether sticking with artificial sweeteners would help maintain weight loss better than the use of sugar. And as we've already mentioned, there have been some concerns about how artificial sweeteners may impact the gut microbiome. So they were also curious to see how those metrics like blood sugar and blood pressure were impacted with artificial sweeteners compared to sugar. So what happened? Well, let's have a look at the weight metrics first. After the two-month weight loss period, the group who used the artificial sweeteners, they maintained their weight loss better compared to the sugar group. The difference was about 1.6 kilograms, so that's not a huge amount, but it's real and it is a meaningful difference. And it's likely an underestimate of the true potential impact, because a subset of the artificial sweetener group with the highest compliance had a 3.8 kilogram greater weight loss compared to the sugar group. But what about the gut microbiome? Well, the results from this part of the study are particularly important. If the theory is right that artificial sweeteners can throw out the balance of the gut, that's a potential significant problem. And the researchers did find differences. They saw differences between the groups in 46 distinct types of bacteria over the course of the study. So were these changes, though, concerning? 
Well, the researchers noted a marked increase in bacteria strains that produce short-chain fatty acids. So short-chain fatty acids are known to promote beneficial health effects, so they can boost energy expenditure and increase feelings of fullness after a meal. They can also counter inflammation, combat obesity, diabetes and cancer, and are protective against heart disease. So that all looks positive. On the other hand, the artificial sweetener group also experienced a shift towards more bacteria that produce methane, so the researchers speculate that that might be the reason why that group experienced more gastrointestinal discomfort compared to the sugar group. But of course there are limitations, our knowledge of the mechanisms of the gut microbiome are still developing, and it isn't clear at this point what the ultimate impact of these changes might be. And even though a year is a reasonable amount of follow-up time, a longer term study might be needed to assess the impacts of years of consumption of artificial sweeteners. Overall, it is encouraging, though, to notice what the researchers didn't see. So recall that the worries about the ways that artificial sweeteners might affect the gut include things like negative impacts on blood sugar control. Well, they assessed a risk of markers for type 2 diabetes, including fasting glucose and insulin levels, and they found no differences between the two groups. Now, speaking of safety, there were also no negative impacts in terms of LDL cholesterol, blood pressure, and other similar metrics. So if there were any truly harmful impacts of artificial sweeteners, they didn't show up in this 12-month study. And the microbiome changes seen at least raise the possibility that these impacts overall could be beneficial. And it's worth including a note about the funding of the study. So the research wasn't sponsored by the food industry. Rather, the funding came from a research grant from the European Union. And while five members of the study's team had some potential links to the food industry, the majority did not. And another quick thing to note about the study, it was disrupted by the pandemic. They had a high expected dropout rate, which lowered the power of the findings somewhat. So at this point, it's important to ask, do the findings from the study line up with other clinical trials? Well, yes, they're consistent. Most previous studies have found similar results with modest weight benefits and no obvious negative impacts with artificial sweeteners compared to sugars. So for example, a meta-analysis from last year pulled together the existing data, and the focus here was a bit narrower compared to the study that we've just been examining. It looked just at drinks. The meta-analysis included six individual studies and a total of over 1,700 participants, and overall switching to artificial sweetened drinks resulted in a long-term weight reduction of about one kilogram. So far then, the randomized clinical trials consistently yield results that run counter to the observational study data, and that gives us added weight to the view that there are confounding factors in those observational studies that might be driving these misleading results. So what's the takeaway from this research at this point? Well, it's important to note that there are still many things that we don't yet know. The debate continues, for instance, about whether those wanting to lose weight should opt for water as opposed to artificially sweetened drinks. So in one study, for instance, surprisingly, the participants who were drinking an artificially sweetened drink maintained significantly stronger weight loss than those who drank water. So what explains that surprising finding? Well, it wasn't activity levels, because the researchers tracked that. Instead, they speculated that it might be that limiting sweetness in their drinks caused the water group to seek it elsewhere, which then boosted their calorie intake. And there are still some lingering questions about long-term safety, though this new study somewhat dispels them. So might we find something concerning if this new randomized controlled trial lasted 10 years rather than just one? Well, maybe, but the direction was favoring the artificial sweetened group, so I do think it's unlikely. Overall, at the clinic, I tell my patients that if they really struggle to cut down on sugary drinks, artificial sweetened ones are a less bad option, and they might even be preferable to water, which again is a really surprising finding. But when it comes to weight control, what we drink is just a small part of the picture. What about the rest of our diet? Well, make sure to check out this next video here to learn the guidelines that I share with my patients who are serious about losing weight.